KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas and Fort Worth, the voice of the people. Business owners, tell KNON's listeners about your business. You can put your business or event on KNON. KNON currently has space available to run announcements for you. Tell KNON's listeners about your goods, services, nightclub, concert, or event. Help keep the voice of the people on the air while putting your information on the air. KNON's been named the number one radio station in Dallas by both the Dallas Observer and D Magazine. Put your business with Dallas's number one station. Call now for more information at 214-828-9500, extension 227, or extension 233. For more information, go to KNON.org and click on the Run Spots on KNON page. It's a great way for your business to support community radio while letting more people know about you. Good afternoon and welcome to Lambda Weekly. I'm Dave Taffet here in the studio with... Me. Oh, uh, with Aaron Moore. Um, <laughs> Just me. The late Patty Fink is Just me. still late from last week. She did her civic duty and then some by working the election yesterday mm -hmm. and then woke up this morning with a migraine. So. Did, uh -huh, I can see that because that election was kind of a headache. Yeah, well, uh, actually, it should have been easy to, to run. Nobody voted. I know. God, turnout was really bad. Did I say who you are? No. Oh, okay. I'm here with Me. Aaron Moore, Me. avowed lesbian. Me, avowed lesbian. Uh -huh. Lesbian. And Doc is on the phones. <laughs> Before we get to the election, it yes. is Pledge Drive. It is. And uh, we just need you to call. It's a real simple thing to do. Just give us a call, make a little pledge, support Gay and Lesbian Radio for North Texas that's been here for you for toity tree years. You know, toity, I mean, most, tree. most organizations and, and other stations that ask you for their pledge ask for a minimum of $35, and all they do is say, thank you. We're cheaper than that. Yes, <laughs> we'll, we are. We'll Especially take, you. Me too. I'm very cheap. Yep. Um, we'll take anything you have uh, that you, you are willing to give up to keep KNON Radio and especially Lambda Weekly on the air. Yeah, and... and um, KNON has supported gay and lesbian radio since day one that this station went on the air. It wasn't something that they thought of as an afterthought. We were part of the mix from the very beginning. We were the only media, basically, uh, in Dallas at the time, the only gay media in Dallas at the time. Uh, and uh, we've been here ever since, usually yeah. on a Sunday for a little short time. It was on a Wednesday morning. but well, that was, uh, Those were dark days. Th those were dark days. <laughs> yes, literally. <laughs> uh, yeah, our guests especially really hated us for that. Um, different ways that you can pledge, one is to give us a call, 972-647-1893. That's 972-647-1893. Or you can text. You can text KNON to 56512. That's KNON to 56512. What does that do? Uh, it will get you a pledge form on your phone. Excellent. And you can just make a very simple pledge that way. The other thing you can do is uh, pledge by bank draft with a monthly pledge. Uh, if you'd like to do that, just give us a call. Tell us you'd like to do that. We'll just get your name, your phone number, uh, basic information. Give it to the office. They'll get in touch with you during the week and tell you what you need to do to get that draft going. A uh, very easy way to really help the station. That helps a lot because it helps with the monthly cash flow. So give us a call, 972-647-1893. That's 972-647-1893. Docs are standing by. Docs are standing by. Patty's not here, but she's back seat hosting. Is she? She's and, texting me. And what does she want? She <laughs> She's just chiming in about the election. Okay, what, we'll give her the first word. Uh, just that it was a 6.76% turnout. Uh, which is, actually, that's about average, isn't it? That's pretty, well, we normally get around 10 to 12 in a big election. Well, a mayoral election should be a big election. Mayoral, but the the other wasn't. years, where the mayor is a four-year term, uh, the city council is two-year term, so the... the uh, in between ones, where it's just city council, I get it that it, that it's we had a mayoral election and we had a contested mayoral election. It was election. mayoral. It should have been eleven or twelve, and then in presidential years we twenty-ish usually, well, give or take. But in presidential, that yeah, yeah. our elections, I'm talking city elections, city elections that are always yeah. in May, never with uh, right. w with uh, the presidential election. Which somebody was actually talking about at my polling place yesterday. They mm -hmm. were hoping that they can combine them with the with the quote unquote normal normal elections, because we have one in May, and then we're having one coming up in November. Yeah, you know? other than in um, 
Houston, mm -hmm. city elections in Texas are all in May. Yeah. Which is, you know, I guess it was done in order to make it easier for people to vote on a Saturday. Yeah. It uh, took the attention, uh, or, or the attention wasn't taken away by bigger elections, but people just don't get out and vote. Yeah, I, and I mean... I have to say that our precinct, Patty's precinct, she's the precinct chair, uh, does turn out and vote. But uh, Actually, you live in District 9. Yes. District 9 had the highest turnout. Yeah. You yeah. had five candidates running, but some districts had eight candidates running. Had yeah. half the number of voters. Southern District was horrible turnout. Horrible turnout. For mm -hmm. all for all the yelling and, and hair pulling and, Hello? oh my God, candidates, candidates and, you know, a media that's going on. They just don't turn out in the Southern District, and I don't know why. West West either, so. West Dallas, terrible. Monica Alonzo was reelected. Four candidates in that race. Mm -hmm. She was reelected. She got less than 1,000 votes yeah. and was reelected with more than 80% of the vote. That's the terrible. Votes. Yeah, I know. It's horrible. It's terrible. So, I mean, I don't know what we can do to get more people to care about the local government, which actually affects them more day-to-day -day than any other government does. Um, but some of the results were surprising in good ways. Mm -hmm. um, I, again, because I worked that poll, but my district, uh, Mark Clayton won with uh, 57, I think was the final percentage of the vote, with no runoff in a race that was really hotly contested and Five-way race. Yeah. Um, the well, one that surprised me was Sam Merton, yeah. who came in fourth. Right. And he's the one who started off the race with the biggest name recognition. Kind of, yeah. He, he wrote for the Observer. Yeah. He was the he worked for the mayor. He never got past um, moving into the district to run in the district. I don't think that's people paying attention. Yeah, it is. You know, people paying attention was not the problem in this election. Well, that's true. It was people not voting that was the problem in this race. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I went to several, probably <clears throat> ten forums, uh, where there were several districts represented, including the mayor. Um, and he just, he never, he never really did well. And that was always the first question. You know, how long have you lived in the district? Oh, three months. You know, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you know, so, um, and, you know, and. But he's lived in Dallas. Right, right. It's, you know, it, yeah. it's like, I can vote on issues. I live in Oak Lawn now. I lived in Oak Cliff for 30 years. I could vote on issues about White Rock Lake. I've ridden my bike around that lake enough times to know. I understand. You know, it's just, it's it really seems like people are getting more community based. Mm -hmm. uh, and and when I say community-based, I mean street by street, not not area by area. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's a good thing. I mean, we're really getting more micro-focused on our immediate neighborhoods. And those are good things. Yeah. So get out and vote. We're well, right. Yeah, I hear you. Although your district, uh, more than 6,300 people did vote. Mm -hmm. And by 1,000 votes, that's the highest total of any of the districts that were voting. Um, other districts, um, a number of races were uncontested. Scott Griggs uncontested, Adam right. Madrano uncontested. Only 1,100 people got out to vote for Adam. Right. But there was a mayoral race. Right. And so that, that allowed yeah. your district to determine who was going to be our mayor. You're welcome. I guess. <laughs> I mean, it depends no, on how no, you're sporting, no, but yeah. Seriously. Yeah, no, it did. You're right. And, and you're right. I mean, I was looking at those uncontested <clears> races, too, and going, oh, well, of course they didn't get a lot of votes. But then I started thinking, well, there's other people on the ballot, you know. But even the mayor, I mean, he got 75% of the vote. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that With one, only 30,000 votes citywide out of yeah. an, out of a... Three million? Well, in, in the city, we, a million. million. A million one, million two. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean... It, it, I wish That's people terrible. cared more, but they don't. Mm -hmm. And and I don't know what's going to make them care more when we have more hot top. There's no hotter topic issue than than the ones that were discussed this election, which is you know the toll road, mm -hmm. um, our streets, and uh, you know just pulling it in, in more micro. And it, it's the old uh, tug of war between big vision or um, you know my street. Mm -hmm. And this mix, this election was a real mix. It wasn't a mandate one way or the other, despite Mayor Rawlings' statement. Speaking about caring, if you care about KNON, ah? oh. it is Pledge Drive. If you care about better segues from David, Pledge. 
<laughs> and I will work to come up with them. Uh, the number here is 972-647-1893. That's 972-647-1893. It is our pledge drive. Uh, we have a goal of, I can't read that on the back wall. Uh, what is our goal? You can't read. Uh, because, no. I can't. Well, have a goal. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, Doc's checking. It is hard to read. We are about halfway to our goal, though. In Whatever the first, our goal is. In the first week, which is very good. It's very good. Uh, because Pledge Drive started uh, last weekend. Did and I tell I, you about my Pledge Drive game? Uh, what is your pledge I have drive? a Pledge Drive game. Yes. I always try and find the weirdest Pledge Premium on our sheets. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then push that for the for the time I'm on. A and your Pledge Premium weirdness. K-N-O-N you know. guitar hand fan. You need one. I, I must, you know, because I want to know what a guitar hand fan is, for and one a, thing. And you get one for a pledge of? Uh, for a pledge of $25. It's mm. a bargain. That is a bargain. I mean, is it a is it a fan shaped like a guitar? No, it, or a, is it a, something that you fan yourself while you're playing the guitar. Or a fan for your guitar. Because your guitar might get hot. Might what get hot. <laughs> hot. What is our goal, Doc? The, the person that put that thing up there is, is using negative logic. We still have 53000 uh to go on our pledge drive. Okay. So uh, so we're halfway we, there, though. Yeah, we're halfway there. We really need to get going here. I need to have my phone ringing. It's 972-647-1893. Uh, if you want a sample of KN1 free coffee before you pledge, come on down. I'll give you a cup. 972-647-1893, because that is one of our pledge premiums. Doc always takes the uh, coffee. Uh, the, the coffee now. Mm -hmm. Everybody laughed at me during the drought when I was stocking up on umbrellas. See, I love our umbrellas. I know you love the $75 umbrella. $75 pledge. Those are the best umbrellas. They, they really are. The, that is the toughest umbrella I'm, that I've ever had. I'm envious of your umbrella every time I see it. And, well, every time it rains like it's exactly. raining today. 972-647-1893. Give us a call. $75 pledge gets you one of those umbrellas. $40 pledge gets you one of our shirts. We, um, how much? We have some shirts. They're kind of a... Uh, khaki with black writing on them uh, with with short sleeves. Yeah, there's it's a Dickies work shirt. <clears throat> okay, and how much is that you know, a pledge for? Because Dickies work shirts are fabulous. So it's a $100 pledge. It'll get you the tan short sleeve button up. Dickies tan work shirt with black Kano and logo. And it looks really cool. A couple of years back, we had like the bowling shirt that mm -hmm. I pledged and got. And I wear that thing all the time. 972-647-1893. I forgot to tell you one other way that you can pledge. You can go online to KNON.org. Uh, hit the pledge button. It's up in the upper left-hand corner. The page comes up. You can choose your premium. You can fill in that you listen to Lambda Weekly and uh, make your pledge online. Did, did we talk about text pledging? Yes, we did. We did. We did? Uh, okay, but, I wasn't paying attention. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he, he, wasn't he mentioned paying. it. Neither is anybody else. The phone isn't ringing. The phone is not uh, to ringing. To text pledge, you can text pledge to KNON, or you can text pledge KNON to 56512. That's KNON to 56512. We're just talking about the elections a little bit today. Uh, yesterday was election day. It, you know, give you an, uh, an idea of how, fo how, how focused people were on this election. I went out last night with some friends, and I had my laptop with me because I was reporting on Dallas Voice's website election results. Right. And they didn't know what I was doing. I said, well, I'm just reporting the election. What election? Wow. Well, for mayor. That makes me sad. Of uh, Dallas, you know, the city you live in, that, that's bad. That makes me sad. Yeah, that's real bad. Um, now, the mayor had some ads on TV. He did. And they were good ads. Yeah, they were very good ads. Mm -hmm. But uh, they obviously weren't noticed. I mean, if a number of people who normally are up on what's going on around them mm -hmm. didn't know that there was an election going on yesterday... No, I'm not buying that. Okay. Shame on them. Okay. Um, it, uh, there's enough people with TiVo now that skip television ads, but if they haven't been paying attention to the news, to Facebook, to you know web crawls, to billboards, to anything that they're getting in the mail, then shame on them. How did you I mean, not know? Yeah. Okay. I mean, there, there's, that's no excuse. You know, and the, frankly, I think television advertising is becoming less and less important in elections you know it's the biggest it's the biggest expense if you get it but i don't think it changes anybody's mind it's just uh, getting your name out there and there i think there are now there are more effective cheaper ways of doing that but my point is 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 the television ads are not going to swing this one way or the other mm -hmm. if 
if you don't know that there's a city election going on now, then shame on you. And 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 what I think it is is they knew it and didn't care. Um, let's just talk a little bit about some of the other races. Sure. Uh, District one, Scott won. Uh, well, he's unopposed. Number two, Adam won. They were unopposed, both of them. Yeah. District three, which is Von Seal uh, Jones Hills district. She couldn't run because of uh, term limits. Five people running. There's going to be a runoff. Casey Thomas and Joe Tave. Joe was uh, endorsed by Stonewall. Mm -hmm. Do you know anything about Casey Thomas? I do. Um, he's been around a while and he's actually sought, um, I believe he sought the DGLA and the Stonewall endorsement in the past. Mm -hmm. um, he's more... He's he's drifting right to to run for this seat. He's he's being backed by uh, Councilwoman Hill, and is is definitely pro toll road and pro transportation. Mm -hmm. um, Joe Tave is actually sort of unofficial. Well, I don't know if it's unofficial or not, but he's backed by the the Philip Kingston crew. Mm -hmm. um, so it could be an interesting mandate uh, could be an interesting race. runoff yeah now district three um that was originally scott uh griggs district the mm -hmm. first time he ran right uh redistricting the district got split uh von seal who lived on the edge of her district got redistricted into district three uh scott got districted out of district three but district three's um gay area is um keastwood and uh down towards Mountain Creek Lake, mm -hmm. uh, that area. Huge district. It's, I think, the biggest district in the city, like something like 100 square miles. It's yeah, huge. it's big. Um, and, you know, DGLA actually, uh, we didn't endorse Joe Tave, Stonewall did. DGLA endorsed Winnie uh, Cannon, Winnie Cannon right. who did the worst. But I have to say, she and Joe Tave were very similar in a lot of their mm -hmm. answers and a lot of their, you know, we just liked Winnie's passion. Mm -hmm. um, but Joe is. Do you know? I talked mm -hmm. to Joe um, for a story I was doing, and you know, I said, uh, introduced myself, uh, gay paper, blah blah blah, and he said, oh well, that's one thing I don't even have to explain. On my next door neighbors are gay. Yeah. Uh, my my campaign treasurer is gay. He said, you know, I'm with you on your issues. Well, and the reason the reason I brought that up was. Um, and I'm sure Patty's talked about this, but for the first time ever, every we had a candidate in every single city council race, including Mayor Seek, the DGLA endorsement. So, um, you know, that was that was a historic year for DGLA, and we're going to have to, I don't know if we're going to go back and re-endorse for DGLA, but I think Stonewall will in some of these runoffs. Mm -hmm. um, uh, district 4, uh, which is um, who did, uh, Dwayne Carraway's district, right. again, uh, term limits. Uh, Carolyn King Arnold. One outright. One outright by 45 votes. By 45 votes, but in a... No, not, and she didn't win by 45 votes. She avoided a runoff by 45 votes. Right, right. Yeah, um, it was close. She won by 51%. She had 51%. Next closest had 13%. So but she didn't win, but... But there were people in that race. To get that is amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Nobody expected a winner in that race. Yeah. And had she gotten 45 votes fewer... Right. Uh, there would have been a runoff uh, with... Um, with, uh, with Carl, Carl Hayes, Hayes, who I, I don't, don't know. know. Yeah, Jinx. Um, <laughs> I don't either. Uh, at one percent, Stephen King. That would have been scary if he won. <laughs> you know, I was actually worried that people would vote for him just because of his that name. His name. Yeah, mm -hmm. but um, I guess they got the word out. District five, somewhat of a surprise. Rick Callahan. People, Not a surprise. Uh, uh, well, District 5, Rick Callahan, people thought, um, was out of touch with his community. Uh, the district was created to be a Hispanic district, and Callahan is not, and yeah. people have felt he isn't responsive to his community. Sherry Cordova got uh, the endorsement of DGLA and Stonewall. Right. Uh, but Rick won with 66% of the vote. And that, I think, is the power of incumbency there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, I think Rick is still vulnerable. Mm -hmm. If the right candidate challenges him. Now, again, people didn't vote. Right. Yeah, that that the, whole election was 1,400 people. Well, 1,489. Uh -huh. Callahan got uh, 989 votes. Diaz got 93 votes. Dan Diaz had dropped out before the rate, before the election day. Oh, he did drop out. He did drop out and okay. endorse Cordova. Okay. Yeah. Cordova he, got 407 votes. Yeah. So she she still would have gotten like 500 or so <clears throat> if, you know, if he had been able to be off the ballot 
possibly. But yeah, that's that's the power of incumbency there. That's mm-hmm. you know better the devil you know than the than the savior you mm-hmm. don't. So um, and not saying anything bad about Rick Callahan, but you're right. That district is really drawn for not him. <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and that doesn't mean. Yeah. That a Hispanic voter yeah. can't vote for a white candidate, or a white candidate doesn't have the right, right. to vote well, to Scott run. Scott Riggs that. is an example of that. He beat Delia Hasso when that when they were smashed together. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and the you know Monica Alonzo winning is no big surprise. Um, but again, she only won with nine hundred and fifty eight votes. Nine hundred and fifty eight votes. You know, one candidate in that race got twenty one votes. If you're gonna, can't, couldn't you in one afternoon? round up more than 20 votes. I would hope so. I, I would hope so, too. Yeah. If, and this was a whole election cycle. Yeah. We need to take a break. You're listening to Lambda Weekly on 89.3 KNON FM. I'm Dave Taffet here in the studio with avowed lesbian Aaron Moore. Oh, we'll be back with more right after this. KNON depends on listener support, and now is the time for you to help keep this show on the air. If you like what you are hearing and want to show appreciation for your community radio station, then pick up the phone and call to make a pledge. Call 972-647-1893 or go online to knon.org. Don't wait for someone else to do it. Without the support of our listeners, there won't be any community radio on the air in North Texas. So take a few minutes to make a pledge. Call 972-647-1893 or go online to knon.org. KNON.org. KNON thanks you for your support. David? And yes, I'm trying to get that, uh, our, our bumper that says, you're listening to Lambda Weekly on 89.3 KNON FM. You did a good job. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, it is Pledge Drive. So, and we just had a pledge from a friend. Um, from Jeff and Jeff, thank you very much thank for you calling for that. in. Uh, if you would like to join Jeff by pledging, you can call us nine seven two six four seven one eight nine three. We have hats, shirts, umbrellas, fire sale. Nine seven two six four seven one eight nine three. Yes, shirts that usually go for forty dollars for this week only are forty dollars. Caps <laughs> that we usually have for forty dollars going for forty dollars. Yeah. Umbrellas well. that are normally seventy five dollars on sale one week only for seventy five dollars. So give us a call nine seven two six four seven one eight nine three. That's nine seven two six four seven one eight nine three. And, you know, we, we joke during Pledge Drive, we try to keep it light, but we really do need you to call because we do need your money. we're n- entirely listener-supported. Um, and I Well, mean, not, not, to- not entirely. Well, we are li- entirely, because other than that, we have our uh, events that we, that we hold, and those events are for our listeners, and it's our listeners supporting us again when mm-hmm. they go to the events. Um, if you'd like to become an elite music sponsor, in fact, if you do go to a lot of our events, Canoen holds 40 to 50 shows every year uh, because we're your live music station. Uh, we play great music on the radio, and you can come and uh, be on the guest list for each of the shows that we do during the year. All you got to do is show up well, and you say show I'm up, here. Your name's on the list. You've yep. done that before. Yep. Aaron. Patty and I did that one year. It was a blast. Mm-hmm. Um, plus food at most of the events. So mm-hmm. if we do 50 shows a year and they're a, and you're paying $500 to be a, an elite music sponsor and you get two tickets, not yep. just one ticket, you get, you get two, two tickets. tickets with dinner. That really is a bargain. It is a bargain. And I mean, you know, if you're a fan of live music, if you're a fan of, uh, you know, blues or Zydeco or, you know, they even have a rap uh, concert, I think. You know, there's a heavy metal event. There's all kinds of, you know, eclectic music that you not only hear on KNOM, but you can go see live. Um, and then, then the $500 Elite Music Sponsor is for you. But even if you can't afford that level, um, anything you can pledge today goes to keep... Uh, KNON Community Radio on the air, and especially Lambda Weekly that you're listening to right now. And, you know, and you know, um, you were just talking a little bit about uh, some of the live local music mm-hmm. that we play. This was the first station to play Erica Vad- uh, Badu, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, mm-hmm. Pantera, Reverend Horton Heat, Nora Jones. Um, our show, uh, one of the first to play uh, Lisa Loeb, mm-hmm. and had her as a guest a couple of times on the show when she was first getting going. Right. Uh, we had on uh, in the early '90s, we had the Dixie Chicks on mm-hmm. when they were just getting going. So you know, that's just our show. But across the uh, the dial, not across the dial, across the uh, uh, schedule, 
that's one of the things we do live and local music and, and you, no other station does it and we push the we push the pledge premiums you know the the extremely random pledge premiums that we have sometimes like the lunch koozies or the you know uh, guitar picks you know where else can you get a KNON guitar pick mm-hmm. but through a pledge but that's not why you're pledging you're not pledging to get something you're pledging to support this station and this show you know and there were very few other shows on the radio anywhere on the dial we're talking about the election mm-hmm. who had Marcus Ronquillo and uh, Mike Rawlings we on had his both guest. both mm-hmm. candidates for well both serious candidates for mayor um, on the show talking about GLBT issues mm-hmm. and I mean where else are you going to get that kind of information mm-hmm. so um, so you should call and support Lambda yeah, Weekly nine seven two six four seven one eight nine three and when you say that where else are you going to hear that you're saying where else are you going to hear that anywhere else in the country I guarantee you that there's a show like ours in uh, Los Angeles and there's one like us in Houston. They didn't have their two major mayoral candidates on their show, although we did have one of Houston's mayoral candidates on our show. Uh, Give us a call, 972-647-1893, 972-647-1893. And, you know, it's funny. I'm, I'm not trying to just toot our own horn. But sure we, you are. No, no. And we, I, need, we need to. I but, mean, we well, But I that. really yeah. want people to, to understand it's not just us and it's not just about us. It's about supporting KNOM that has supported the LGBT community for so long. Well, and I mean, we're going to have uh, Celia Israel on next week, right? Um, no, weeks. next week is Candy Markham. Week after is Celia Israel, state representative. And then week after that is Harriet Earhart, and, former state representative. And, and honorary you, lesbian. And honorary lesbian. Official honorary lesbian. For mm-hmm. those of you who don't know who Celia Israel is. She's a representative in tech, um, Texas State representative from Austin area, who's a uh, openly gay in the legislature, and uh, actually managed to get one of the few pro LGBT bills passed this session. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, I mean, she's been working on things like um, getting rid of reparative therapy yep. in Texas yeah. for minors. You know, um, so you know, re- and if you think about Texas legislature, yeah, that passed easily in California. Right. Actually, it passed with a fight in California. She has some guts Well, and it, to, to put that in the floor of the House. My point is all the bad news coming out of the Texas legislature. You know, Celia Israel, who's been a guest on the show before, who is going to be a guest on this show uh, coming up, is going to give us the inside politics of all of that. And where else but on Lambda Weekly can you hear that kind of specific information to our community? Mm -hmm. So if you like that kind of stuff, and if you're listening, you probably do, give us a call, 972-647-1893. I want to go through the rest of the Dallas City yeah, Council races. Yeah, we need to finish races. that up. Just people uh, need to know. District 7, which is kind of the Fair Park area. Yeah. Um, Tiffany Young got 40% of the vote. She'll be in a runoff uh, with Kevin Felder. Yeah, that one. Tiffany DGLA uh, endorsed mm-hmm. Hassani Burton, who came in fourth, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, one, two, yep. three, four, the, fifth. Uh, he no. came in fifth. Was, okay. uh, Stonewall, one, yeah. One, two, three, Whatever. Yeah, there was he a, came in fourth. He came th- in fourth. This was the clown car race. There were what? Nine people? Eight yeah, people? Two, three, four, five, six, eight. Yeah. So, I mean, it now, was. Now, in that one, do you know what surprised me? What? Juanita Wallace. Because she was the name I knew. People very often vote for a name that you know. She's the former head of the NAACP here in this area. She was. And um, Randall, no, not Randall Parker. Um, <clears throat> Kevin's run before, mm-hmm. so he had a little bit of name rec- okay. recognition. And Tiffany Young has run before. So, but yeah, you're right. Juanita had the big headline name. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not that I'm surprised somebody else might have won. I'm surprised she came in uh, third from the bottom on that one. Right. And I, I think she... Fourth I don't, from the bottom. I don't Point. know. I mean, not living in the district, it's hard to say, mm-hmm. you know, because, I mean, there was definitely a lot of nuanced things going on in my district, so I don't know Three how, she, how yeah. she ran. Yeah, I don't know what kind of campaign she ran at all. Um, 3,216 votes cast in that yeah. race. But there were eight people running. That's not a lot of people getting out to vote. Correct. Correct. Uh, and, district 8, there were six people running. Um, th- that's far south Dallas. That's um, Tanel Atkins' district right mm-hmm. now. 
Diane Gibson will be in a runoff with Eric Wilson. Do Eric you know with any- a K Wilson. Uh, do you know anything about Diane Gibson? I don't, um, which is shame on me, because mm-hmm. uh, I should. She was obviously um, the top vote getter. Eric I- Wilson I met, very nice guy. Uh, Gail Terrell is the one who got DGLA's endorsement. Correct. Stonewall did not endorse in that race. No. Uh, I like Gail. I like Eric. I don't know Diane. Um, but there'll be a runoff in that one. District 9, Mark, yep. Clayton, Mark Clayton ran away with that one. Yeah, he really uh, did. Were you surprised? You live in that district. Were I, you surprised? I, everyone, including him, I think, thought he was going to get into a runoff. In a runoff, okay. Yeah. Um, but he ran a heck of a race <clears> and, <throat> frankly, put shoe leather in where a lot of candidates haven't before mm-hmm. in, a, in some ignored uh, neighborhoods, mm-hmm. and they came out. Okay. Uh, District 10, James White, uh, out of it now. He was endorsed by Stonewall. Uh, Paul Reyes uh, is a corporate attorney. He got 40% of the vote. Adam, how do you pronounce Adam's last name? Is it Magoo or McGuff? Neither. McGew. McGew, okay. Adam McGew got 36%. They'll be in a runoff. Um, Adam was endorsed by DGLA. Yes. Um, and Paul Reyes was a former John Corona staffer. Um, and I think people are kind of... He, he still is, isn't he? Or no? no? No more? Okay. Well, does he not Cor- still Corona's work for Corona? Office, right? He does oh. still work for office, but... Works for John Corona's company. Yes, he does. Um, and I think people are, are kind of thirsty for a more... It's a pretty Republican district. That's Jerry Allen's district. Mm-hmm. Um, moderate Republican, both of... And they are both, you know, not that this is a partisan race, but still, you know, the way you think about things. No, but the the way they would address the issues, yeah, there yeah, would exactly. be a certain appeal. And frankly, this was a race, and I think the total show that, where there wasn't really a bad choice. Mm-hmm. It really did come down to finer, good candidates. To finer points and who you liked, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Lee Kleinman, District 11, unopposed. Sandy Grayson, one unopposed in her district. Uh, Jennifer Staubach Gates, unopposed in her district. Philip Kingston, unopposed in his district. Right. So that's the roundup of uh, those races. Um, a the couple mayor, of more the mayor important race races, we didn't, though. We, we didn't really talk about, which is kind of an, one of the more interesting ones to me. Even though Rawlings won by 75% of the vote, um, no. A lot of the loudmouths were supporting Ron Keo, mm-hmm. and I think, frankly, disappointed in the way he ran the campaign. Um, he's not a fly-by-night candidate. Mm-hmm. He's got a long history in Dallas, a long history of civil rights activism in Dallas. I just, I don't know, I don't know what happened to that campaign. Mm-hmm. You know, for him to get blown away by that big mm-hmm. of a margin. Um, people didn't vote. Well, there's that. People didn't vote. But still, the percentages of the people that did vote, Mm -hmm. it 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 just it was interesting to me. You know, some some of the tighter races are interesting, but some of the ones that are such a wide margin are equally as interesting for different reasons. So, Um, another race that uh, is of a lot of interest that we didn't mention uh, yesterday, Wade McLaughlin won. Who? Wade McLaughlin won. That's great. Wade McLaughlin was. (laughs) Wade McLaughlin is openly gay, and he is the second out Canadian premier. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, He will yeah. be the new premier of um, Prince Edward Island. Which that, is ironic as heck. That's a Canadian province. Yes, it's a Canadian province. <laughs> it's also something else that we won't go into. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But uh, it's interesting. He's it's a the, piercing win. <laughs> he is the second out Canadian premier. How many provinces are there in Canada? I About don't a dozen. Know. Uh, Canada, I don't know. <laughs> and there are three openly female premiers. Openly female? Uh-huh. Oh yeah. Well, the one that's you know that everybody's oh my god surprised about is the win in Alberta. Mm-hmm. Alberta might as well be Texas. Right. I mean, it is an oil, typically very conservative, uh, open space kind of place where mm-hmm. the you know where the um, Keystone Pipeline. So they elected Ann Richards. And they essentially no. They essentially elected Elizabeth Warren. Mm. I mean, you know, as far, far, far left as they could find, they they elected her mm-hmm. overwhelmingly, I think. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's going to explode some heads. And her caucus, because the the um, uh, province parliaments are run mm-hmm. like a parliament, so. Um, 
her caucus is half women. Well, and what's a <laughs> which which is interesting. They asked her, "How did you get so many women?" Mm -hmm. Is she's you know to to run? How did you get equality? She said, "Well, I just asked women to run." There you go. And what what Patty and I were laughing about this morning is all these. Uh, People in the United States are saying they're going to leave the United States because of Jade Helm 15 and the mm -hmm. invasion of Texas and all this and go to Canada. Mm -hmm. We're like, okay, where are you going to go now? Mm -hmm. I think they <laughs> yeah. should go to Prince Edward Island. <laughs> well, um, when Wade McLaughlin was campaigning, uh, first of all, he said it, it just was not an issue in, in the race. But uh, he did a lot of, you know, Prince Edward Island, small province, and you can do a lot more personal campaigning in Rhode Island than you can in Texas, right? Right. So Prince Edward Island is one of those small provinces. And so they did a lot of door knocking. And um, not only did he, but his husband did too. That's great. And he said, it never came up. It never, you know, nobody said, no, I'm not going to vote for you. But, no, you know, some people might not have. But he said, all we discussed when I knocked on doors were issues. And the fact that I'm gay just didn't come up. And um, one of the, the other um, lesbian uh, premier, mm -hmm. she said, we seem to be beyond that. Good. It never has in her campaigns either. Well, it, it, that's, I mean, that's what true equality is. It shouldn't matter, you know? I mean, we shouldn't be saying openly gay or lesbian. We just should be saying so-and-so won. Well, they're not saying openly gay. We're saying it here where right. we're still... But we don't have marriage equality in the United right. States. You right. know, they do in, in mm -hmm. Canada. And they're over it. They're done. Mm -hmm. And and frankly, you know, we always said our activism should lead to us get, not having a job. And mm -hmm. that's kind of what's happening there. It's very exciting. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. And they seem to be 10 years ahead of us. They were about yeah. 10, 15 years ahead on marriage equality. So Canada, I think that, the new California. <laughs> I think that's what we have to look forward to, yeah. quite seriously. Yeah, I agree. That's why I think that, that this is very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and it's the premier uh, of Ontario. Her name is Kathleen. Isn't it terrible that we don't you know, I know, these names? I know. We don't even know them. Um, well, it may as well be Minnesota, but yeah. <laughs> Kathleen Wynne Wynn. is the no lesbian premier of Ontario. I'm not making fun of them. I'm, I'm no, I'm not either. I'm envious. I'm envious, and we, you know, we we're so we're so self-focused in the United States that we don't pay a lot of attention to other, you know, to our neighbors, much less to other governments around the world. Until there's something like a an openly LGBT person elected, but we should. We really should, because I mean, their policies affect our policies. So. Right. I'd like to thank another listener, Jay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jay. And um, thanks for all the. I can't read your handwriting, Doc. Thanks uh, for uh, all the. I'll, 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 I'll uh, bring out the hieroglyphics and say the, the, the call the um, pleasure said thank you, Aaron, for all the great work you've done. Aw, thanks. Okay. And it is pledge drive. I'm blushing. That's you why can't we're see thinking. me on radio, yes. but I'm blushing. Nine seven two six four seven one eight nine three. Keep my phone ringing, please. Yes. Nine seven two six four seven one eight nine three. We're going to take a break in just a second. Uh, you are listening to Lambda Weekly, the world's oldest, longest running, longest continuously running gay and lesbian. I had to add host. The continuous, continuous, oldest, continuous. longest running the, gay host. No, not the oldest gay host. Um, <laughs> uh, but if you'd like to put me in the category with Letterman, who is the longest. Nighttime host right He's now. He's retiring, though. He right? is retiring. I'm not retiring. You can't get rid of me yet. 972-647. Actually, you can get rid of me by not pledging. 972-647-1893. That's 972-647-1893. Operator is standing by. Only one. Only one. Because when you call here, you actually get a call to the studio, unlike that other station where you're calling another city. 972-647, you are. 972-647-1893. We'll be back with more Lambda Weekly right after this. KNON has survived on listener donations for over 30 years. And now you can support community radio easily from your smartphone. Text KNON to 56512. Click on the link and fill out a short questionnaire to make your donation. Don't forget to select the type of music and the DJ you are supporting. Your support truly does make a difference. Text KNON to 56512 and make your pledge to Dallas's original community radio station. Hi, this is Patty Fink, and you're listening to Lambda Weekly on 89.3 KNON-FM. And 
that is Patty Fink, the late Patty Fink, who is still on her way to the studio. She <laughs> She'll be here in a minute. <laughs> hopefully be here by next show. <laughs> um, you know, we were talking about the elections earlier in the show. There was an interesting poll that NBC and uh, the Wall Street Journal did. The majority of Americans are not only rooting for marriage equality, they're also fine with the idea of a gay president. What they're not so fine with is the idea of a Tea Party president. Isn't that amazing? Uh-huh. On marriage equality, 58% uh, of people, according to this poll, say they want the U.S. Supreme Court to rule for marriage equality. 44% um, of those say they feel strongly about it. Now, when was it? Um, 30, uh, um, just a few years ago, it wasn't 44% who said they were okay with marriage equality. Now there are 44% who are not just okay with it, but strongly believe the Wanted, Supreme yes. Court needs to make that ruling. Did y'all talk about the arguments last week, the oral arguments? Yeah, we did. My, so. my favorite moment of that whole thing mm -hmm. was when the guy arguing against marriage equality essentially said, you know... A 70-year-old guy can still have a kid if he has an affair. Oh, wait, I didn't mean that. You know, so, I mean, when their own arguments are... Well, we can have an affair. About the sanctity... Or I could marry a 30-year-old. Well, you're right. Right. But then he can't really have a kid. I'm sorry, my phone's going crazy with this weather alert stuff. Oh, well, um, tell your phone, leave me alone right now. I'm... I I'm on KNON. Um, Doing but yeah, pledge seriously, drive. Yes. We're, we're having two conversations at once. Uh, we're not. She's talking about, um, uh, and, and I'm saying call 972-647-1893, 972-647-1893. What were you saying, Erin? <laughs> that you're really bad at segues. Uh, thank you. Uh, um, no, I was just, just going to do a little community service announcement and just say, really, be careful, y'all. If you don't have to be out in this weather, don't be. So you can be home listening to us and pledge. 972-647-1893 or go to knon.org, click the pledge button. All of the uh, pledge premiums come up. All of the information that we need comes up. Your credit card information goes up there and you make a pledge to the oldest, longest running, continuously running gay radio host in the radio show in the world. <laughs> um, been on the air since KNON went on the air in 1983, so we're coming up on our 30... Something. Something anniversary. Yeah, math not yeah, good. Yeah, whatever. Math yeah. not working today. It's Sunday. 972-647-1893, uh, or you can text KNON to 5... Just a moment as I go through my How sheets. are those new glasses working uh, out, David? Yeah, they're doing just fine. I don't even know where they are. They're <laughs> at home somewhere. Text KNON to 56512, and I will hold this up to the... Uh, 56512. To the video camera and to Aaron so that you can read this. Uh, 56512, text KNON. You can do that during the week. doesn't have to be during our show. Uh, we'll get credit for it as long as you fill in Lambda Weekly on there. Can we talk more about the crazy clown car legislature we no. have right now? No. Please? No. Can we? Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, actually, the most heartbreaking thing that I read this week was a Representative Miller out of um, mm -hmm. Houston, Houston. Area, mm -hmm. who introduced legis anti gay legislation, and his son is gay. Um, and they did it purposely yeah, that way. Yeah, in, they wanted him to introduce it so it would have more impact. And not just have more impact, but so that the rest of them could say, well, it wasn't me. He has a gay son, and gay he introduced guy, this. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I was just voting with the guy who has the gay son. Isn't that good of me? And the bill is about. Um, I don't remember which bill it is. Um, it yeah. It's one of the bad ones. It, well, they're all bad, but, but you know, and the gay son. I'm going to quit saying gay son in a minute. His son, who is gay, um, and his partner. It just shows the com compartmentalization of some of these people. Here, it, uh, Rick Miller filed a bill that would repeal local ordinances banning discrimination against gay uh, and gay, lesbian, and transgender people. Uh, so it, it would nullify all of the local ordinances. Uh, yeah. and, and those ordinances prevent people from getting fired, things like that. There's a couple of bills like that. They're more broad about local ordinances, period. But this mm -hmm. one's specific. This one's specific. Yeah. This is specific. And, you know, the sun has come out. And Which, actually, mm -hmm. is good reason to have it overturned in court. Right. We'd probably be able to get an injunction against it, uh, and um, 
higher courts would see that that law was based on animus. It is definitely based on animus. I mean, his his son and his partner, or I think husband, uh, have been over for Christmas and dinners and this and that, and it's gotten so compartmentalized that the the representative that introduced the bill said something like, "Well, I love my son, but I don't love his lifestyle." And we're like, "Wow!" And then you don't really love your son. Still, that much. then you don't really love your son. Yeah, mm-hmm. and just the fact that we're still hearing that kind of logic mm-hmm. is astounding to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other thing, and is that unfair of us to say? No. Okay. And the reason I say that is, you know, I come from a family where when the day of the Supreme Court uh, debate Mm -hmm. on same-sex marriage, I put something on Facebook that said something about, um, oh, even Brian and I are talking about getting married now. You know, it was just kind of one of those offhand. I got emails and Facebook comments from my family all over the country. What's the date? We, We need to set a time that we're coming to Texas. That's what I call... Supportive? Supportive yeah. and that's not – accepting is a, is a bad word for it because that's not accepting. That's, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's not anybody looking at somebody's lifestyle and it's such obnoxious terms to even use. I know. It. it is. I mean, like Patty likes to say, RVing is a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. But, um, but it's just sad to me that, that someone can compartmentalize that much and have – his son, who he says he loves, and his partner slash husband, I, I, and I keep saying that because I can't remember if they're married or not, into their home for holidays and celebrating with them, and then still turn around and say, but you're going to hell. So I'm going to repeal... I don't care if you're discriminated yeah. against. Yeah. And, you know, And here might be part of the logic. His son is an attorney yeah. at a big firm. Well, he's not going to get fired, so it doesn't affect us. So it's okay for me to uh, to put this law into effect. See how much I love him. Well, they're saying this it's is bi- just obnoxious. They're saying they're against big government until they're the big government saying they're against local government. You know, and mm-hmm. it's just it's it's fascinating to me. And then uh, real quickly before we go on to anything else, I want to bring up the Cecil Bell bill, which is now a hat. It's a stupid bill. It's a stupid, stupid legislation um, about not paying clerks who perform same-sex mm-hmm. marriages and actually fining the counties that do it. Um, but he's got 88 sponsors on that bill now. Mm-hmm. That's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of people tagging on and saying, yeah. It's more than half. Yeah. So it's going to pass. It's scary. could pass if it gets to the floor. It's got to get out of committee. But, yeah, it's scary Mm -hmm. to me that 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 kind of of hate-filled, petty, just really petty and specific legislation. You know, I want to say something nice about him. Has 88 sponsors. Oh, my God, what? Um, (laughs) I'm scared I forgot who it was who told me this this week. He's got a good hat. That's about all I can say. Molly White (laughs) has gained a reputation. She's a representative from Belton. She's gained a reputation for her constituents coming into her office and saying, I don't want to waste your time, and more important, you're not going to waste my time. Right. Now get the hell out. Yeah. Um, Cecil Bell, uh, people who were opposed to that particular bill, went into his office to talk to him. His aide was taking notes, listening. They said you could tell the aide was not um, comfortable comfortable with yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Cecil Bell came. I know who it was. It was Diana Finfrock, mm. who was on our show oh, about a month, month and a half ago. Uh, Cecil Bell was sitting in the next room. He heard the discussion. He came out and sat down and talked to them for 30 minutes. Well, that's good. You know what? I respect him for that. I respect him believing in what he's doing and not just doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, But nonetheless, this this really reminds me of the old days with Warren Chisholm out of Pampa. But it's sad that I can say, you know, I respect him for at least sitting down listening. Mm -hmm. Um, When the legislature has gotten that bad that you have legislators legislators who are saying, I don't agree with you. Get the hell out of my office. I don't represent you. I represent him. He voted for me. Well, it's horrible. Him who I agree with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it, which is why I was saying it reminds me of the old Warren Chisholm days where, mm-hmm. you know, I got thrown out of his office. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just, it's it's that kind of, I, I wasn't elected, uh, I wasn't elected for you. You're right. I was elected for me and mm-hmm. for what I believe. And, and I'm here to be the voice of the voice. You know, we, that's our tagline, the voice of the people. I'm here to be the voice of the people that agree with me. Well, no, you're, you were elected. By everyone. Right, but uh, and just that, that level of, of public service has gone now. What it's, people it's, don't it's understand, very small. some of these legislators just don't seem to get the idea you have a partisan race, 
yes, you run on certain principles, mm -hmm. but once you're in office, you do represent everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. And, and it's your job to at least listen to them. Politics has gotten very small. Mm -hmm. it, it really has, and in both directions, but primarily on the Republican side. And I think they're trying to hold on to what they have, which is getting smaller and smaller, because what they have is being recognized more and more as hate-filled and self-serving and petty. I want to mention one other election. San Antonio had a mayoral election. Uh, it was to replace um, Castro, who's now in uh, Obama's cabinet. And you know who Obama is. He's the one who's invading Texas. Uh, Texas Guard is keeping us safe, keeping all the troops from invading the rest of the state. Right? Right. Yep. Okay. Uh, San Antonio <laughs> mayor, though. Um, uh, La <laughs> yes. <laughs> Letitia Van de Pute, 29% uh, of the vote. Ivy Taylor, 27% of the vote. Uh, so they'll be in a runoff. Mike Villarreal, who also resigned from the legislature uh, to run, he got 25% of the vote. He's out. Somebody named Tommy Atkinson got 9% of the vote, and the other 10 candidates got each 1% of the vote. And Ivy Taylor is not our friend. Uh, not at all. Uh, and um, she was one of the council people on the city council who voted against the non-discrimination ordinance that in correct. that city and since becoming mayor she's refused to implement it. Um, to Letitia Van de Pute, obviously not so much. She, she is our friend. Not so much against. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I saw Letitia at um, one event and what was funny was watching her from the stage work the room. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, I hadn't seen you. Hey, how are you? Hey, yeah, I'm, she's good. You know, and it, it's like Everybody that she was pointing to was gay or lesbian in the audience who, who she's pointing to. I, I, come up, see me afterwards. You well, know, was, in some ways, in some ways, Villarreal being out of it, 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 it would have been interesting to have a Vanderpeet Villarreal runoff because mm -hmm. uh, there was really no bad choice there. They're both our allies, but him not being in it, there's no dispute as far as how our community should mobilize and work in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. If you have friends or family in San Antonio, please, 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 this is a very important one. So get them to vote for Vanderpute. And it is Pledge Drive. You can vote for KNON. You can. That With was money. a good segue. That was a good one. Yeah. Thank okay. You. Okay. 972 647 1893. 972 647 1893. Or KNON.org. Click the pledge button. Or, hold on, hold on. Oh, he's, I, I, I'm he's holding up for the camera. Text, text KNON to 56512 and make your pledge from um, your phone, from the comfort of your phone. But you should be at home because this weather is And, Doc, could we have a little video uh, excerpt of this? Oh, sure. my gosh. Thank you. 972-647-1893. Mm -hmm. uh, That's 972 647 uh, 1893, thank you. Uh, Did you forget all of yes. a sudden? See? <laughs> no. Dave is the oldest, longest running radio show host in the nation. Yeah, except the number changed in like about 1995 or something. And you're still trying to catch I'm up? I'm still trying to yeah. remember it. Yes, yes. 972 647 1893. Give us a call. Pledge to Gay and Lesbian Radio for North Texas. Get your Texas. guitar hand fan. Get your t shirt, your umbrella, whatever it is that you'd like. Or, the guitar or, hand fan. Uh, Oh, yeah, one of those. Uh, three of those. The apron. You get three of those for 25 bucks. You can get a patty apron. Patty apron. Do they still offer the apron? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. We don't need any more. I'm sure you don't. <laughs> <laughs> you have years and years and years yes, worth do. of aprons, and you don't cook. Uh, I Yes. No, you're wrong there. We both do. Oh, okay. Reversible, right? A rever yeah. The apron? I uh, used to do a show... Uh, with somebody else who uh, she said you know what's so good about that apron it's canvas on both sides you can just turn it over when it gets dirty I said then all the garbage gets on your clothes she it's said, okay oh that's right it's okay we, we, we have said, that you could just wash it we have that problem solved we have two of them <laughs> so yes but so, yes lots of lots of good K-N-O-N wear and you know what K-N-O-N wear is kind of coveted because when Patty and I go shopping to all the snooty places we go shopping like Whole Foods or Central Market or these all the great local farmers markets that are popping up and wear our K-N-O-N t-shirts, bags. You mm -hmm. can get two tote bags for, what, 50 bucks? Yep. Um, you know, when we... When no, we no, I think it's 35. Uh, whenever 40. we show our K-N-O-N wear, people always give us the K-N-O-N nod and go, K-N-O-N, I love K-N-O-N. And I always want to say, did you donate? But I don't. So I'm asking that now. If you love K-N-O-N, did you donate? 972-647-1893. <laughs> Doc is standing by. Doc is standing by. Well, actually, Doc's sitting he's by. He's sitting by. Yeah, but he's here. Um, 
So just to wrap up the city elections again, you know, this was this was being touted as the big sea change with six seats being up and, um, you know, a new council. And if you don't like things, vote. And of course, people didn't. But uh, and we're still not done with them yet because there's several runoffs, which will be in June. Um, and so you have another chance, I guess, is my point. Mm -hmm. If you if you you didn't have a chance in who got into the runoff, but you have a chance who's going to vote for who's going to be your next city council. Do you person. want a good example of somebody in the legislature who should not be in the legislature, um, and people get there because people don't vote? Uh, he is what is his name? Um, he is from San Angelo, and uh, Drew Darby. Okay. He was caught at Austin Airport with a uh, walking onto a plane with a gun, actually trying to go through security. Now, security. You mean the FAA is an open carry? Uh, <laughs> well, that's what he thought. Uh, in 2014, uh, nationwide, 2,212 guns were confiscated. And make no mistake, they don't hand you your gun back and say, "Oh, gee, you just can't carry this in." They take the gun from you. Um, you yes. lose your gun. Yes. So if you get 350 of those, though, were in Texas. Those Ooh. gun confiscations. Um, so Drew Darby uh, decided to change the law that if you are caught with a gun in an airport in Texas, his bill will make it. Uh, so that you cannot be arrested for that. Because he was arrested. Uh, federal law is that you're yeah. arrested uh, for trying to carry a gun in. So not only is your gun confiscated, but you're arrested. He's trying to get rid of uh, being arrested uh, because he didn't think he should be. He just forgot. Oops. He happened to have packed it in his carry-on uh, bag. But he forgot him. he had it. Uh, but he, he just didn't know that it was in there. <laughs> Except he packed his... If you have so many guns that you forget where you put them, you need, you need to not be worried about laws like that. Oh, my gosh. That's ridiculous. So, I, so oh, you're right. Geez. He doesn't need to be arrested. He just needs to be thrown out of the legislature. But his bill is working its way through the legislature right now. Why do people consistently reinforce the stereotypes of Texas? Why is that? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the number to call to pledge is 972-647-1893. That's 972-647-1893. Doc is sitting here just... He's twiddling his thumbs. Nodding off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's not real happy right now. 972-647-1893. Thank you to the two pledgers we did have. Thank you to our pledgers, yes. Um, and uh, you can continue to pledge. You can pledge online by uh, going to knon.org and click the pledge button. Very easy to do. Uh, we'll Let him know you. Lambda Weekly sent you. We'll remind you on our Facebook page this week to do that. Uh, and... Um, if you didn't hear us beg for money enough, you can listen to the podcast. And then we'll beg for money again. Well, this, in the same way that we just did now. <laughs> yes, it'll sound familiar. It will sound familiar <laughs> if you listen to today's show. <laughs> so, Or you can listen to last week's show if you didn't hear that and hear us uh, beg you for money there. So Candy's coming next week? Candy will be here next week to, um, to for, fix for, you for my quarterly therapy session. Good. 972-647-1893. That's 972-647-1893. Some of you might be waiting for Candy to be here. Maybe you can call in with your problems, too, and she'll fix you, too. She's a good fixer. She is a good fixer for all of us here at Lambda Weekly, or the few of us that are here at Lambda Weekly this week. <laughs> Thank you for <laughs> for filling in today uh, for Patty and being the guest. Absolutely. We'll see you again soon. KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas and Fort Worth, the voice of the people. Business owners, tell KNON's listeners about your business. You can put your business or event on KNON. KNON currently has space available to run announcements for you. Tell KNON's listeners about your goods, services, nightclub, concert, or event. Help keep the voice of the people on the air while putting your information on the air. KNON has been named the number one radio station in Dallas by both the Dallas Observer and D Magazine. Put your business with Dallas's number one station. Call now for more information at 214-828-9500, extension 227, or extension 233. For more information, go to KNON.org and click on the Run Spots on KNON page. It's a great way for your business to support community radio while letting more people know about you.